guys, what's up? It's Joe Reddy from Reddy's Rides. I'm back here at Subaru of Port Ritchie, and we're doing a little comparison of what would $40,000, roughly around that amount, get you at your Subaru dealership if you're looking for a larger vehicle to not only transport you, your family, your friends, and your gear, but also do it in that traditional Subaru way where you're gonna get full safety from front to back, side to side, top to bottom, and also a flat engine, that flat engine, horizontally opposed pistons. What we have are two brand new, we got the 2019 Subaru Outback. This one is a 3.6 liter, flat six, that 3.6 R that they call it. We have this 2019 Subaru Ascent, which has a 2.4 liter flat four, but with a turbocharger. So let's just talk a little bit of history here. So Subaru has been known for their all wheel drive, for their safety, for overall performance, and for just being a great all around car. This is the tradition. This is the long standing. This has been in the lineup since 2004. On the other hand, the Ascent is basically still the new kid on the block. Came out on the scene here at uh, Loki Subaru, Subaru Port Ritchie back in 2018. But let's go ahead and take a look and compare the new Outback to the new Ascent. So you can see with that Outback, What's amazing about it is that it confuses a lot of people. They don't understand what it is. It's not an SUV, guys. It's a wagon. It always has been. Always has been. I love the headlight housing. I like the way Subaru is doing this really, really nice looking design when it comes to their daytime running lights. And I think it was super smart to have just these big, round, massive fog lamps and this ABS plastic in the front fascia all the way across the bottom. It gives it a very rugged look. Also, really just blends in well with this beautiful pearl white paint job. Subaru has gotten so smart with branding their grills. This is your traditional Subaru shaped grill. I like this metallic gray. It's a little bit different than just a gloss black. And I like the addition of the chrome pieces with that Subaru emblem right smack dab in the center. I really also think it was smart to have a little bit of a different design right in this middle portion of the front fascia. 8.7 inches of ground clearance is what makes Subarus so awesome, especially this Outback. Let's go ahead and take a look at the front of the Ascent. This is the largest ever Subaru ever created. Still gonna have that 8.7 inches of ground clearance just like the Outback. You could see the similarity in the family heritage of that design that they're putting in the headlight housing for the daytime running lamps. See what I was telling you about the grill? Even though the grill's larger, even though it's got a little bit different shape to it, it's still that basic Subaru, let you know this is what is in front of the fascia. I like how they did, brought in the ABS plastic. One thing that I'm gonna zonk is I don't really like this design that they brought into this area. I wish they just would have just left this painted, had it start, the bodywork start right at the top of this chrome piece here. And you have, this one doesn't have fog lamps, but you can get an optional higher trim. Remember, we're trying to compare 40,000 roughly, so about back and forth between these two. So technically there should be a fog lamp there if you go up a higher trim level. But right across the front, just really aggressive and just let you know that Hey, this is the Ascent. It's the largest Subaru. It's got 19 cup holders. So if you're a thirsty person or you got thirsty passengers, you're gonna really help them out on this thing. But love the hood, love the shape of it. And I really think it was smart to put a nice body line right here, right in the smack dab center of the hood. Just gives it a little bit extra personality because you know and I know at the end of the day, these large Subarus can just get lost in the sea of SUVs. But let's go ahead and check out the sides of these two Subarus. All right guys, time to take a look down the side of the Outback. You can see right away, it's a wagon. It's not an SUV. Let's go ahead and take a look at the side. I like the way it wraps around the headlight housing. Very nice design. And then you're gonna get a large wheel. This is an 18 inch wheel. I love the brushed aluminum. I like the metallic gray. You know, I think this wheel would look bland on other types of vehicles, but on the Outback, it just fits it perfectly. 
As we go down the side, I like what Subaru has done with bringing in some nice chrome around the uh, window openings. I also think it's very smart to have these corner windows. Very, very nicely done, helps with visibility, helps with blind spots and whatnot. You can see Subaru's doing it smart. They took that beautiful white pearl paint, brought it onto the side mirrors. You have a nice integrated LED turn signal. And then of course, no Outback is gonna be complete without the roof rails. You could get the Subaru branded or your own crossbars. You could throw just about anything on the tops of these Outbacks. And what's really nice, if you notice, I'm six feet tall and the top of the roof is manageable. So that's a really nice feature when it comes to getting an Outback over, say, the Ascent. As we work our way back, nice large glass, really cuts down on blind spots. And then once we get to the back portion, I just love the way everything comes to a nice corner here. And I think it was very smart the whole way down to have that ABS plastic. It really is gonna help take a beating when you're going down those trail roads to your favorite spot to put the kayaks in. It's got that Outback badging on the side. Such an iconic car. Let's go ahead and take a look at the new kit on the block still, the Ascent. All right guys, time to take a look down the side of Subaru's largest vehicle ever built. This is the Ascent. As we come around, I like what they did on so many of their models where they take the ABS plastic and go all the way around. The fender well here gives it a more off-road, rugged look. Check out these wheels. Really nice design, very similar to what is on the uh, Outback, but these are larger. So these are two inches larger in diameter. It's a 20 inch wheel compared to the 18 that we just saw on the Outback. I like the plastic being wrapped around and kept down here, 8.7 inches of ground clearance. And then I really like the similarities. You have corner windows. They brought that beautiful black paint onto the mirrors. If you can see one place I'm gonna zonk the mirror is there's no turn single. I would like to see an integrated turn single built into the mirror. But other than that, I'm glad that they brought this beautiful paint onto the mirror. You got your roof rails. You can see the difference. Six feet tall, remember, to get up there, you're gonna have to get a ladder or get on your tippy toes or get somebody taller than you if you wanna be able to successfully get stuff up on there. Just something to be mindful of. You're gonna need the crossbars. Like the chrome trim around it, just gives a little bit upscale feel because over the years, that's probably been one sore spot on the Subarus is that upscale feel, but guess what? They've changed it on all their models. As we continue to the back, like what they did, with such a large vehicle, you gotta tidy it up. Comes back to a nice cor corner. I like the larger piece of uh, chrome here to kind of separate the sea of black. And then really nicely the way it just wraps around into that lower ABS plastic that we talked about that's gonna help take a beating if you're going over some brush and whatnot. But let's go ahead and probably check out one of the most important parts of either of these, the cargo area. Let's go check it out. All right guys, time to check out that most important part, the back of the car. I love the Outback. Compared to the Ascent, you can see just how much lower it is, even at the tail end of the business. I like the way that they have this roof hatch lid spoiler that comes out. Nice, tasteful, nothing too aggressive. Just look at that paint, just sparkling in the Florida sun. Really like the design of the taillights. You know, a lot of people seem to, on some of the other models, not like the lobster claw, the crab claw, or the crawfish, whatever you're calling the claw of the day, no claws to be had here. Just like on the front, I like what they did by bringing the darker plastic up a little bit higher on each side. You have a nice design integrated into that rear portion. And if you notice, another thing that's super smart, Subaru tucks all that exhaust up underneath. So when you're going a little off-road, because I'm telling you right now, that all-wheel drive, that full-time symmetrical all-wheel drive is going to take you places that some people just wish they could go with their vehicles. It's going to be nice and clean and you're not going to have to worry about ripping off your muffler and going to go down to Midas and get a new one welded on. You can see the nice tasteful Outback 3.6R. A lot of these Outbacks are just flat fours. This one has the flat six. There's our wonderful all-wheel drive and if you're ready, I'm ready to pop this open. You push the button. I bet you your 2004 Outback doesn't have that. And once you get in here, one of the largest openings you're gonna find in the back of really any SUV. You can see we put the 60-40 split down. And just to show you, here is the security shade, just to show you how deep that is. That's how far that's gonna go down. Nice touches. I really just like how 
uh, open everything is from top to bottom, left to right. You have these wonderful handles. So I don't know about you, but if you ever, ever own one of those cars where, or trucks or SUVs, and you're trying to put the seat down and you're like trying to reach and reach to hit that button, they're right here. So that's a really nice feature because watch, you pull here, bam, look at that. Flat as can be, you could put a big piece of plywood, your bicycles, your kids' junk, maybe even throw some kids back there. But that's what makes a Subaru a Subaru is that they're just so usable. Let's go ahead and check out that ascent. All right, guys, time to get into the back of the Jolly Green Giant of Subaru's lineup. Let's talk about the exterior. So if you're taking notes, six feet tall, you see where the roof line is. As we come off the back, you got this roof spoiler on the tailgate area. I like the addition of the chrome that they run, and I think it was very smart to have it go into the taillight housing. Just gives it a nice cohesive look all the way across. You have your chrome badging, Subaru, that's symmetrical, all-wheel drive. It's all-time, all-wheel drive. It's not like some of those other brands where it's mostly front wheel, and then once you're in trouble, and it's probably too late, then the all-wheel drive kicks in. This is all-time. Nice silver, aluminum touches here. Also like what they did where they brought the plastic up very high. That's gonna help take a beating. You can see this cover you would take off and you could uh, obviously put your hitch on here and you could trailer things that you need to do. And then finally, I think it was very smart to do the dual exhaust on the back of this Subaru Ascent. Just very tasteful, very high, high scale. And then when it's time to open up the back, you push the button. And just like before, remember, what makes the Ascent so special is you have three row seating. We put the back uh, seats down, but you can see how easy it is to pull them back up. Very, very simple. Those fold down. The mid row uh, folds down. Very, very uh, flexible. You have really nice 12 volt back here. Little, little tiny light, which I wish these lights were a little brighter. I'm gonna zonk that, because I know there's been times I've been in the back of like a cross trek and the lights, you just can't see anything. But you can see just how much room you have back here. You could easily put a couple bicycles, some coolers, whatever you're gonna do. And that's what's great about Subarus, is that it's all about that lifestyle. It's all about the culture. It's all about getting out and going to see things and do things. And of course, who could forget their association with dogs and how you could easily get your Greyhound back there and take it to the vet or take it to the park or whatever. That's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Let's go ahead, check out underneath the hoods and see what makes a Subaru a Subaru. All right, guys, we got the hoods popped on these two Subarus. Let's go ahead and start with the one that was first on the scene, the Outback. Under this Outback, though, is not a four-cylinder. It's a flat six, 3.6 liter. You're basically looking at 256 horsepower from that flat six. It is mated to a CVT transmission. So that's gonna be the Zonk in the engine compartment. Another zonk I'm gonna give it is that massive engine cover. I'm not really digging the look of that, but you can see, I'm gonna have Tom show you just how low that engine is in the chassis of the front of this car. It's unbelievable. You're looking at MPGs, if you're into saving that gas, 20 in the city, 27 on the highway. If you need to tow anything, you're looking at a max of 2,700 pounds and this Outback weighs in around 3,992 pounds. Now on to the big boy. Underneath this hood, we're gonna zonk it right away. So Outback has hood struts. This massive hood on the largest Subaru ever built is a tiny little prop rod. I don't know about you, but it'd be a big risk to put my head underneath that hood. But what you're looking at there is that 2.4 uh, flat four and you can see just how low it is in the chassis, just like on the Outback. Now, if you're wondering about stats on this particular motor, what you're looking at at the end of the day is gonna be uh, 260 horsepower from that 2.4 flat four engine. Uh, this large Subaru weighs in at 4,500 pounds and the difference, the main difference when it comes to towing is with this, you're gonna be able to tow up to 5,000 pounds. Now what's interesting with the four cylinder, you're gonna get 20 in the city and 26 on the highway. So even though this is a larger vehicle than the Outback, MPGs are very similar, but if towing is important to you and you need something a little bit more, then this is gonna be able to tow a little bit more. The Zonk on both of them, CVT, CVT, 
And then the extra zonk for this one is gonna be the hood prop, and for that is that engine cover. But let's go ahead and fire both of these Subarus up and see what they sound like. guys we're inside the 2019 Subaru Outback that 3.6 R if you're wondering what is the MSRP on this MSRP is $38,800 let's see what you're getting on the interior check out the door panels I like it I like what I see lots of leather material on the armrest uh, right up it goes all the way near the uh, controls for the uh, window and for the door locks I like the uh, wood grain look to it. It really works well, especially in a white Outback. I think it's really um, a nice cohesive package on the doors. As you come in, very soft material. I like the simulated white contrast stitching or like a off silver color. There's some of that faux wood design. I actually, it looks real. It really does look real. Silver breaks up the sea of black on the dash. So that is definitely A-OK -okay, uh, for me from Subaru. When it comes to infotainment, Subaru has come a long way. I'm really liking the size. I like the colors. Now, when it comes to overall use, it is a little bit slower to react, but it's gotten much, much better. The whole Starlink system and everything else. You got your home key, obviously takes you home. You get in your navigation. You can see the font that you're working with. But like I said, I would like to see this be a little bit quicker acting like it is on some other cars. Wonderful uh, dual climate control. This does have heated seats, no ventilated seats on this Limited. Let's go down to this area here. I really like this nice co uh, cover. You open it up, a little slow to, to rise there, but you got a nice cubby with, that's gonna be for your 12, your 12 volt in there, and then you have USB. I like what they did here. I like this, it's almost like a, a, a wood grain texture on the center console here, but it's black. Very tasteful, little bit of silver, little bit of gloss black, some leather on the shifter handle here. You got an electric e-brake. This also has X mode. You hit the X mode when you're going off-road. It helps uh, with you know climbing and getting through certain rough terrain. Outbacks have a wonderful armrest. I love the feel of it, the texture. You open it up, you got a large train here. You can put some pretzels, uh, maybe even popcorn if you pop it before the trip. Or maybe you can bring the popper with you. Who knows? But um, you have a nice usable space in here, so that's a really good thing. And then the seats. Seats are comfortable. I like the gray. So many Subarus, you go to a dealership, it's like light color seats, light color seats, light color seats. Nice darker gray. I like the perforated. I like the design and the stitches. My only complaint is I would like to see the bottom portion be a little bit longer. Now I know some uh, viewers who are shorter have said that the seats are perfect for them. I wish there was a way to make that adjustable so everybody could be happy um, and really just enjoy driving. Inside, I like the lighter headline color. I also like the sunroof. Now, it would be nice if this was panoramic and your passengers can enjoy the sunroof as well, but it's just gonna be for you and the, your passenger. Let's check out finally before you come to the business side. This is the new updated EyeSight technology. You're gonna get the full suite of safety features and this is one of the best in the market to keep you safe. And on top of that, a frameless mirror. Very smart. Let's see what's happening over here IQ wise when we're looking at the business end. Come on over. All right guys, here we are business end. It's actually pretty smart over here too. I like the full power adjustable seat top and bottom. So many cars go cheap and they give you a manual back. I don't know what's up with that. Love the steering wheel. Steering wheel is tilting, telescoping. I li I'm actually liking it. I'm liking the gloss black on the buttons. It gives it a nice upscale feel. And it really, I mean, I'm putting my fingers all over it. I don't see any fingerprints on it. So I'm going to say that Subaru sprayed some mag magic non-stick finish for fingerprints on there. Maybe like a Pam spray or something like that. But I, I like the silver all throughout the steering wheel, and I really think it's just a nice looking steering wheel just to look at while you're driving down the road. 
gauges are perfect. Good size, analog, and just simple to read. So you have an analog tack. I like the blue backlighting there, and you have that digital display in the center. There's our X mode I just hit. If you're gonna go off-road, nicely done, clear to understand, push button start. I mean, what else more can we say up here that Subaru has really brought the A game when it comes to their interiors? Is it perfect? Of course not, but they have gotten a lot better. Let's go ahead and check out the Subaru Ascent. All right, guys, here we are. We're inside the 2019 Subaru Ascent. There is gonna be a quiz question at the end of the video. What is Subaru's largest vehicle they ever made? Here's a little hint, it's the Ascent. Anyways, if you're wondering, well, what is all this size? What's the cost? What do I gotta pay? You're looking at an MSRP almost on the dot for this Ascent Premium, $40,000. So $38,800 compared to $40,000. We got it as close as we can be. Let's see what we have for that. Check out the doors. I'm liking what's going on there. There's a lot going on, but I think it helps break up just a boring door panel. You have some nice lighter leather on the armrest. The one thing that's a little weird for me is like this bone colored carbon fiber that kind of, I don't know why they went that route. I guess maybe to be different and different sometimes could be good. In this case, I'm really not digging it too much. I do like uh, the armrest though. Another thing I'm gonna zonk on that door panel besides the bone colored carbon fiber is why did they use cloth material on the back portion of the door right where the armrest is? That should be all finished in that wonderful lighter leather material. But as we transition from the door panel onto the dash, wonderful soft material. I like where they put the cross stitching up higher rather than low. There's some more of that bone carbon fiber uh, that I'm gonna call it. I'm not really liking it. I wish they would've just went with silver or something. Just keep it simple. You got a nice little hood up here with some instrumentation. Uh, you have your fuel range, a clock, the temperature, and there's different things that you could toggle through by pushing this info button up top on the above the infotainment. Infotainment, you know, about the same as the Outback. I wish this screen was larger, which if you go higher up the trim level, you can get a larger screen. But I like the silver. See how that, what I was telling you about the silver? The silver should be over by the bone carbon fiber. But very easy to use, just a little hesitant to, to, to go. But this one has navigation just like the Outback. Same font, same color, could be a little bit upgraded when it comes to the clarity of, of what you're looking at, but it does work well at the end of the day. And guess what? Subaru has definitely raised the bar and they're gonna keep raising the bar. As we come down, this almost feels like BMW-ish. I love the fonts of the dual climate. I love the gloss black and just very easy to use and navigate through, which you don't want a lot of complication going on here. You have heated seats, so we're gonna zonk it just like the Outback. I would like some ventilated seats and a very nice little command center down here. You have a couple USBs, you have your X mode just like on the, uh, uh, the Outback. That's gonna help it when you go off-road. And I like the way they brought some nice shiny silver down here because it's flat black and it's just plastic. And I think with the shiny silver and some of this other silver, it actually helps make it look a little bit more upscale. You have some leather on the actual shifter handle here. This is that CVT, right? And then you have a large, very nice size armrest, soft, open it up. You got a nice tray in here and lots of usable space seats. I don't like the way they look. The cloth seats are comfortable as can be though. I will give them that. I just don't like the design. And you know and I know if you have children, cloth, light cloth seats are like sent to you by the devil because you're gonna have to clean those suckers, get Stain Master and Stanley Steamer to come out to your, your car to clean it because one spill and it's a, it's a done deal. But they do really support you well. I just wish they would have used a little bit different fabric material. Uh, so that's gonna be a zonk for me. I like the leather material up top and here's my favorite part. You hit it, the button and back goes a panoramic sunroof. So if you want some vitamin D in your life or if you need vitamin D, you've been skipping your vitamins in the morning, then I would probably go the Ascent because you have, look at the size of that panoramic sunroof. It's, it's huge compared to the Outback 
much smaller. You have the new integrated eyesight, slim and trim. This thing used to be so big and bulky. It was like almost like the old VCRs back in the day. Now it's, it's uh, uh, almost MP3 style. So maybe they'll raise the bar and get it even better where it'll be like the iCloud and you won't even see it. But it's really great the way it's behind the windshield. So when stuff's getting flung up on your windshield, you can just clean it and it keeps the eyesight working perfect and keeping you safe. Speaking of safe, let's see what's on going on over here to where you can keep your passengers safe and also get you to your destination. Come on over. All right, guys, business end. I do like how comfortable the seat is. I'm still gonna complain. I'm sorry for the shorter people. I, you see, look, you could clearly see. See where the bend of my leg is? I would like this to just come a little bit further out. For those longer trips, for us tall people, it really matters. So maybe Subaru can do something about that. They can wave their magical wand or something. But I like the size of the steering wheel. Very similar to what you see in the Outback. What's interesting, though, is that they went with a flat black on the buttons. So I wonder what the reason is by, behind that. Maybe because that's a limited and this is a premium. Just one of those things. Gauges. Same as the Outback, simple to read, simple to understand, and that's not a bad thing. I like the little silver trim around it, and I like the LED display in the center. Really, really nice touch, and same thing, X mode. You put in X mode when you're going off-road, and it's gonna help you get there safe and sound, and so that you can enjoy whatever activities that you're doing. You do have paddle shifters on this. That's gonna help you if you want to shift yourself but remember it's just simulated because a cvt has no gears in it so i can't even technically call it a gearbox and when you're shifting it's just simulated it's meant to feel like this gears in the gearbox let's go ahead and we're going to check out the back seats of the outback and the ascent all right guys back seat of the outback i'll be honest i'm probably at this point sounding like a subaru fanboy Maybe I am, I don't know. I really don't think, I love them all. And there's certain things I don't like, but the back seat of this Outback is really nice. I like it, and that, I know you're probably like, that's the best adjective that you could get is nice, but it is really wonderful back here. I like the leather material all throughout the seat. It's soft, it's plush, but it's supportive at the same time. It's not like sitting in a waterbed. I like that. I like how it, it supports me, but it's comfortable. Full leather all the way around the seat. Why can't all the other brands do that? Another thing that's smart is I like the way that they cut out an area to give you more leg room. These seats have not been moved. Six foot tall me was sitting in that seat and we had this seat all the way back and look how much room there is back there. That's nice. You have heated seats for your passengers and then voila, not just one. They could have went cheap and just gave you one USB. They gave you two because they know if you have more than one kid and both of those electron devices die at the same time, do you really want to hear not only one, but two screaming kids? Rear AC vents, check out this armrest. This thing you can land a plane on. That's how large it is. I like the width of it, soft, the cup holders. The only complaint with this is I wish there would be a little pull tab because to get it in, you have to kind of go like this. There we go. It would nice to be nice just to have a little tab. I know I'm being picky or whatever, but I'm being real. And trust me, your kids are going to be like, how do I open up that? And you're like, just take your hand. And they're like, I don't get it. So you just go like that. But it'd be nice if there was a little tab. But the whole seat is wonderful. And headroom. Lots of headroom. Remember, this is a wagon. This isn't a big old SUV. It's a wagon. Headroom. I just wish there was a panoramic sunroof. I need some, some, some vitamin D. I'm trying to lay out in the sun back here, and there's just not much coming in but I do like the overall fit of it. Let's go ahead and check out what does it look like in the back of the Ascent. All right, guys, back seat time of the Subaru Ascent. Let me just show you on the door panel. One door panel there, count them up. One, two, three cup holders. Can you imagine that, that you have all that room just on one door panel? This Subaru Ascent has a total of 19 cup holders. So if you need a vehicle to transport liquids the answer might already be there for you, Subaru Ascent. I like the space back here. Obviously, bigger is better when it comes to space. You can see that massive panoramic sunroof. Sun feels good. Here's where they went smart. I think it was smart to wrap the back in black because we know when your kids get in and out and they got their sticky fingers with PB and jelly on it and they touch here, it's gonna be easier to clean this than this. My advice? Look in the Subaru catalog and see if they have some 
seat covers for this thing because the, the tan, the beige, it's just too light. It's, it's not going to work. Nice command center though for whoever's sitting in the back. You have uh, your rear AC and what's nice is, is that the vents are not here. I'll show you where they are in a second, but you have two USBs. There would be another one here. If you go up a higher trim level, you would actually get your 110, but that's just a plug that they put instead of there just being an empty hole. But I like that little command center. Air vents are up here. So it's got the nice ceiling mounted air vents to keep you nice and cool. <sighs> nice. And just overall, like I said, you can move the seat. Look at this. Go to sleep. Are we there yet? Or if you need to read or play on your iPad or whatever, you can put your seat up. That's a nice touch. When it comes to armrest, this one's a little bit easier. Even though there's not a pull tab like on the Outback, this one's easier to come down. But I'm telling you, this fabric is going to get disgusting after some elbows are rubbing all over it. But anyways, we'll put that back, but it is there. And then if you're buying a scent, you might need that extra row. Let me show you how easy it is to get to it. Boom. So you're gonna get people access. There's that rear row. Now we just have it up in the highest position, but it does go a little further back. One thing I wanna point out, three more cup holders on each side. This is the mega cup holder mobile. When it, they, I think Subaru had to win a prize for the most cup holders in one vehicle. This is it. But let's go ahead and if you're ready, I'm ready to wrap this one up. All right, guys, been a wonderful day here at Subaru of Port Ritchie. The question is all yours. You're gonna have to come up with the answer. What do you need? These are two different Subarus that are gonna give you some similar things, but also some things different. Do you need the cup holders? Do you want more of a wagon rather than an SUV? The choice is up to you. But I definitely gotta give a huge thank you and a shout out to Spencer, Shorty, and everybody here at Subaru Port Ritchie. They just open up the doors and basically let Radies Rides feature whatever we wanna feature. If you are new to the channel and you're on your way out, click that subscribe button and come back for more. I promise you it'll be worth your while. If you are a subscriber, thank you. Thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. Check out my different forms of social media. You know what they're called. If you need some merch, some Radies Rides merch, click that link in the description. It takes you right to Spreadshirt. And then finally, the man of the millennium. Not only featuring one large vehicle, but two large vehicles. These vehicles, the one that Tom would go with is the Ascent because he would put a mobile gym in the back and a protein shake maker in this ascent. That's where, and then he has the cup holders. Tom, you got the cup holders. So thank you, Tom, for all your hard work. I'm glad we solved your problem of how you're gonna transport things. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.